Hello and welcome to this next uh, tutorial and uh, we're going to use Substance Painter and maybe a tool or two other uh, to texture this dress we made in a previous tutorial. Uh, I'll link that somewhere. Um, so, um, bear in mind I made this um, but now I'm the texture artist I, I'm going to look at the model and, and yeah, make some decisions basically based upon yeah, the texturing process. So first of all I've UV'd it, uh, so we can see that down here and I've given it a bit of space, uh, I'm using a UV tile uh, layer and everything has got its own tile for uh, each material uh, type or set. Uh, the only difference really is the uh, the bodice bit. Because the bodice basically, you know, it's difficult to arrange in a square and still have it kind of readable. So, <coughs> so I've separated left and right and given them their own square. And that's because if I put them together, um, I'm going to have a long, narrow kind of um, yeah, arrangement. And that's going to only take up part of a tile. And I want it to fill the whole tile. I want to, I, yeah, I want to have it. I want that, um, you know, resolution. I don't want uh, any real wasted space. So I've split it into, you know, left and right, and I've got two tiles for that. Okay. So other things. Uh, I know from a texturing point of view that uh, this thickness malarkey that I did previously is not necessarily a good idea. Um, I can do it with texturing uh, so I don't need that extra geometry so I'm actually going to delete those things. So let's grab the outer pieces and I'm just going to delete them. Are we going to delete them? Yes, there we go. So uh, it's okay because these underlying uh, pieces are pretty straight so I'm going to be able to, you know, draw on those to get some nice stays and they will stay in, you know, in good shape. Uh, okay, I will do the back as well. Uh, the other additional benefit to this is that now my UV for these uh, trim pieces is much, much smaller. So I can get a little bit more uh, space out of that perhaps. If I just rearrange this a little bit, um, it's largely limited by this waist piece um, because you know it's the the longest piece we have. Uh, but you know we can at least get a little bit more out of this. So if I just select all those and I'll just make them a little bigger. There we go. Some along those lines, perhaps uh, a little bit more. There we go. And uh, you know, depending upon the the texture size, and to get any real detail out of it, you know, I need it to be. I need the islands to be reasonably large on the um, on this on the screen. So I could also make the decision to actually break kind of the relationship between the um, each of these islands. Currently, they're more or less in the same kind of texture density, uh, but it is possible to just grab these and make them a bit bigger. Uh, these two are going to be slightly annoying. There we go. Because they're an odd, you know, shape. And these ones, and these ones. It's just, whoops, deselected one instead of selecting one. Oh goodness, I'm really having a problem here. Let's see if it'll do that. No, it won't. Oh goodness, I've done it again. Oh well, let's do it independently. So if I make those a little bigger there, pop those over there, and these two can go a little bigger. There we go. Just making as much use of the UV space as I can. Yeah, ideally I would keep them all to the same size, like a relative size, so that they all match the same texture density. But some of these are going to be more complicated than others. So, you know, I'm going to want to have a bit of space to work with. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's have a look. 
I think that's okay. Um, it might be prudent for me to actually add something to this here uh, because these hoop dresses, these circle skirts, they're you know great modelled, but they are not necessarily the best uh, for texturing. Because if I want to put a trim around them, um, I'm going to want a long flat polygon uh, or long flat UV island. So you know the question is, do I add to that? Do I do something else? Um, I think I'm going to add to it because you know. Um, I'm going to want that trim and I don't really want to have all sorts of compromises making it difficult for me to add it. So let's do that. Right. So I'll go back to the uh, two window view and I'm going to just sim everything to let it account for the changes I've made. It will slightly arrange, uh, it will yeah, slightly do things a little differently. Let me just press space because we don't have that interfering work, interfering strips here. Uh, these I think need reversing. Yes, that's better. They don't look really, really dark now. And I think that's it. So let's have a look. So what I want is a strip around the bottom of the skirt which extends it and gives me the ability to texture nicely on it. Uh, so let's find out how big our skirt is or how uh, what the circumference is currently. So it's 2534.4. So if I create a rectangle down here and what do I say? Uh, 2536.4 and I don't want it that deep obviously that would be nuts but let's give it a little bit of space we'll have 50 millimeters and I'll put the uh, overskirt texture on it whoops cancel let's try that again and then I'm going to sew it to the skirt so we'll, we'll go from the back to the front so we use our free sew tool. That to there, and there, round to there. There we go. And then in the 3D view, if I select that panel, if I can find it, it's around here somewhere, there it is. And right click and superimpose, let's try a side. There we go, and that's added quite a quite a slice. Uh, I could make it a little smaller if I wanted, or I could uh, cut it or leave it as it is. And I think I'm going to leave it as it is because it gives me a lot of options. You know, uh, I could either have a really deep kind of uh, texture, a really deep trim, or I could maybe um, use a an opacity map to vary the edge. So let's leave that one as it is. And then just to make the sim a little quicker, I'm going to freeze all of the top part. And then I'll just do the underskirt first. So I'm going to copy and paste this strip. And this strip is the underskirt, so let's pop it there. And then we'll sew it up with the free sew tool. there there we go and then select it right click and superimpose side so I want to you know extend the, the underskirt as well as I'm extending the overskirt and you yeah, know the underskirt itself is going to you know um, have a trim so that's nice so what uh, layer have I got on there it's one let's pop a layer of one on the underskirt or the uh, the trim there and then let's let the sim run and we'll get something about right there we go give it a moment to sort itself out 
and that's actually having quite a nice effect so that little extra is pulling this down it's not quite so um, you know bunched up around this tie which is nice yes I'm happy with that okay so in addition to that let me stop the sim uh, I'm going to need to add that to my UVs so let me go to my force split or actually if you don't use that you can just up in the pattern window change it to UV editor and I want to add my strip there to the skirt or the underskirt one so I'm just going to scale this down oops not that much a little bit more and pop that in there and then I'm going to just zoom in a bit and scale it up to fit so I get the maximum width to work with and then we'll do the same for the uh, other side so let's just make it a little smaller move it into place and then scale it down to fit it's been a little bit uh, temperamental on the handle there if I get closer it should be a bit better there we go okay so now I've got two strips and we can use those to add some sort of pattern trim uh, which is great I love a pattern trim okay so <clears throat> Uh, I think I'm pretty much happy now so now I've had a look over the model I've adjusted it for um, you know what I want uh, I'm ready to export so let's snip back to the uh, 2d window then I'll select everything let's just unfreeze these uh, for the moment there we go now I'll export it. So it's file and uh, export OBJ selected. Yeah, if there were bits that you didn't want to export, you could just you know not select them. Uh, that's why I like to do it. Because sometimes I add panels that are keeping things in place, but I don't actually want to be part of the garment. And I'll save this over my uh, test copies here. Uh, I want it as a single object. I want to weld and I want it to be thin. I want unified UV coordinates and that's about it. Uh, my scale is millimeters uh, but that's basically the uh, you know, the model that I created it on the scale. And I'll click OK and that'll have a think about it and eventually it will stop. So that's just a bit of um, info on preparation, things that I think about between you know the model arriving at me, uh, whether it be from me or from somebody else and changes I might make to make the texturing process a little easier. Uh, so in the next section we'll go into Substance Painter and we'll start off. So I'll talk to you then. Okay so let's go to Substance Painter and let's create our new project. So we have a new project, I'm going to select my dress uh, I'll leave it at 2048 for the moment. Um, I might up it a bit later, it's very simple. Uh, but 2048 is going to keep the, the kind of memory that I'm using in Painter to uh, a reasonable level. And uh, I'll use the UV tile workflow because, as you saw in Marvelous Designer, that's how we'd arranged it. So let's uh, click on OK. And that should come in eventually. There we go. So there's our dress and now of course we need to bake our mesh maps so if I go to my mesh maps um, we've got a 2048 output size that's okay um, the one thing I, I am interested in here is the occlusion because I've got those straps sort of tying the dress to the uh, the skirt to the to the bodice and I don't want them I don't want that to cast a harsh shadow through the uh, occlusion so I'm going to take down my max occlusion distance to somewhere sort of near the middle because you know that should help with that so let's click apply to all to that one to apply it to all of the different texture sets 
and then uh, bake selected. So this will take a few minutes, but you know um, that's just the way it works. Uh, so what we're going to do in the first kind of step is recreate the depth that you get out of Substance Painter. Now, uh, not Substance Painter, Marvelous Designer. So Marvelous Designer fakes some seam edges and thickness uh, partially by using a normal map. And you can export that from there, uh, but I'm going to recreate it. Um, so uh, in the next step, now that all the baking is done, in the next section we will start to recreate that depth information. So I shall talk to you then. Okay, so let's start to add a little bit of thickness to this uh, with that faked edge kind of technique. Uh, so what I want is, uh, I want the trims. So let's go into focus mode and then I'll go and find my trim um, pieces. They're down here somewhere. That's the skirt. Trim, there we go. So here's all of our trim pieces and we can um, use a, um, a generator to create an outline around each of our UVs. So let's do that. And so let's delete this layer and I'm going to add a fill layer and to that fill layer I'm going to add a generator. Now I only want this to really affect height so I've turned everything else off and now I'm going to select my UV border generator. And as you can see it has an immediate effect but it needs adjusting. So let's switch to the height channel. There we go. And now we can adjust our options. So I can take my balance down uh, just to get a thinner edge and that might look okay. So let's go back up to our material and it still looks really really wrong. So first of all I'm going to invert it because it was going the wrong way and then we're going to take our distance down there we go and now we've got a little edge around each of our pieces okay so let's have a look to see what that looks like in reality uh, let's take focus mode off and there we go we have some um, pieces you see there's a little kind of ridge where it's joining and i think that's a question of you know, minimizing that by taking down the balance um, and maybe increasing the smoothness a little bit and just getting it to to the place where you know you're happy with what it looks like okay so I'm going to just adjust a little bit uh, it's another UV in consideration another texturing consideration as to whether to have two islands or one island as to whether you know how many of these little joins you're going to get uh, as it happens this one in the front there's going to be one right down the front anyway uh, signifying that it's two different panels joined together so you know I'm pretty happy that that's well not happy but I'm content that it's there okay so that is the general process and we can repeat that on some other uh, panels so this I can right click and copy now I could instantiate it um, but that would take control away from me you know I want to be able to control it on an individual basis and if they're instantiated then you know I lose that so if I go to uh, say the skirt front and I can paste my layers in and this is the reason why I want to be able to control it see that bottom piece is way way out so I can now go to here and perhaps take my distance down to accommodate for that different kind of size of panel and similarly if I go to the other skirt and pop that in whoops was paste there it is I can then adjust my distance down until I get an acceptable kind of result there we go uh, so let's try it actually on the bodice and paste there we go now we've got a nice uh, distancing between panels which is good 
kind of differentiates that they are different panels and it's not just one block and yeah everything's looking good okay so that's putting that thickness back and of course you can go in and adjust these as you want it I'm exaggerating them a bit uh, because generally in 3d I have a tendency to exaggerate things in places because you know depending upon how near it is or how far it is from your camera where it's going to be in the scene if you have really my my new micro kind of details you don't tend to pick them up um, so it just doesn't look right but if you exaggerate them a bit you pick them up and you know it tends to fit in quite well okay so let's uh, just zoom back from this and have a look at it I think that's okay uh, so when we come back we're going to start to work in some color uh, so I will talk to you then okay then so uh, I'm going to want to split a couple of my regions up to give me some flexibility and I'm going to start on this skirt and for that I'm just going to create two folders and it will be uh, a skirt whoops not a scored and then trim and to each of these we'll add a black mask and then with the fill tool I'm going to go to UV island uh, chunk let's move to the uh, mask channel whoops come on there we go and now if I select the skirt part here I'll reveal the skirt and then we'll do the same on the trim and add a whoops not a, oh, what am I doing <laughs> sorry I'm just having a moment and we'll add the trim in so I think I've made a mess there if you do select something you don't want you can just go to black and then reselect helps if I'm on the mask channel there we go and then on the mask channel again it keeps changing for me that's why I'm getting confused and there we go okay so now I can independently control those um, and I have a little kind of inspiration reference here of uh, colors and such like uh, so I want the skirt to be this kind of reddish color and then the trim uh, I'll make a decision on a little bit later so let's go into the skirt folder and back to material Let's get rid of Pure F for the moment. Where is it? There it is. Let's click. And I'm going to start here with a basic plastic. So I'll go plastic map. And then on this plastic, I'll get Pure F up again. And then for this color, I use the color picker and just drag over and pick out that uh, red color. There we go. I might not pick it from there actually I might go up to the bodice bit up here and pick a slightly darker tone or somewhere on the border there we go so let's hide pure F so that's good and I'm going to want to use that elsewhere um, so what we'll do is I'm going to separate out the the top so all of my back pieces on this, everything except the front is essentially going to be a leathery colour or a leathery material. So on the bodice, I'm going to split it into two. So I'll select the bodice, we'll add our two folders, add a black mask to each, and then we'll switch to the mask channel and this will be my front panels so let's call this front and uh, we'll call this one back just for the sake of argument let's change my thing back and this time I want these back panels or back and side at least uh, then I need to decide what these little patches are going to be on um, now I had kind of intended them to be um, on a coloured one, uh, but this one's going. These ones are going to be on the leather, and then I'll put these ones on the same as the, the front part. So let's select that. 
So back to the mask, there we go, and select, and select. There we go. So now we've sort of uh, very successfully divvied that up. So we'll go back to the material. Whoops. Come out of fill mode. And from my skirt, I'm going to copy this material and then put it on the bodice front pieces. So in the front folder, I'll paste that. And there we go. Now I can put um, some pieces around the, the, the sides. So in the back folder, I'm going to pick out a leather colour. Uh, I'm going to go sort of fairly lightish, very similar to our uh, reference. Well, that's a kind of a mid actually. So let's go mid. Uh, la, 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 where's no, that's the wrong one. That's it. So let's minimise that. And in our material library, we're just going to type in leather. And this leather, the rough, I think, is probably going to be a good start. And that will go on there. That looks nice. Uh, I'm going to darken the colour up just a little bit. There we go. That's a reasonable start, I think. Okay, so that's divided some of the colours up. Um, the underskirt and the trim. Well, the trim is going to be largely uh, black, I think. So let's find the trim material. It's this one. And we'll pop a piece on that. And these ones, I'm going to try the artificial leather, see what it looks like. So let's just drag and drop that over there. And then delete that one out. There we go. Uh, the underskirt we're going to do some sort of lacy material and a separate trim so let's find the underskirt so that's the underskirt front we've got our layer on there so i'm going to need two folders one for the skirt and one for the trim we'll add our black masks And where are we? So the fill with the UV uh, UV chunk. So we're on the trim. So I'll select the trim, and then on the skirt, I'll select the skirt. Let's make sure that that happened. There we go. That's good. And now we can uh, use those to, you know, put our respective materials on. Okay, so that's dividing it up and adding a little colour. I mean, it's not anywhere near where it's going to be. Um, you know, we're going to be much more fancy than this in the end. Uh, but I just wanted to block it out and give it a sense of, you know, what it's going to look like eventually. Okay, so uh, in the next one, what shall we do? Uh, well, I think I'll deal with the underskirt and the trims uh, along the bottoms of the skirts because I want those to be, uh, you know, a little bit different to the, the everything else. Okay, so I will talk to you then. Okay, so I'm going to start on this outer trim here. And here at the moment, we've just got a, uh, a kind of filter. And I think I've made a mistake there and just to switch some up that I shouldn't have. Uh, I'll just put that back. And in this trim layer, I want a fill layer. Uh, so let me just drag and drop that onto that uh, that folder and in this layer I'm going to add a layer uh, to it so I'm going to right click and add fill and in this fill I'm going to turn everything off again there we go and in the base color we're going to add like a, a stripey material so for that I'm going to start off well with a gradient so this gradient linear and I'm going to drop that in and see what happens and not an awful lot um, it's basically turning everything black and that's because the scale is essentially wrong so what I want to do 
is change my scaling. So I'm going to increase my scale until I start seeing something. So you'll see there I've started to get some stripes, but they're the wrong way around. Uh, so I'm going to rotate those by 90 degrees. There we go. Now they're in the right kind of place. Now perhaps my scale is too big. That's a bit better. Um, but the properties on this linear gradient I can adjust to make these uh, a bit sharper. So where are we? Let's take the contrast up. There we go. That's more like it. And balance will give me a bit of control over width. And there we go. Okay, so that's given me basically the, you know, the color that I want. Um, but what I want to do is actually give them some color. And for that, we need to add a filter to this layer. So I'll add a filter. And to that filter, we want a, a color map. Where is it? It's not color match, it's gradient. That's what we want. So I essentially only have two colors, black and white. So I'm going to switch that down to two. Uh, you'll see this one is the, the slightly grayer. And if I bring up my little thing here, we can click this eyedropper and pick out a color. Might adjust that in a moment or two. And then I can use my eyedropper again and pick out the other color. There we go. And I might see to just adjust those a little bit. That's just to get me in the right kind of ballpark. So I could lighten that up or darken it down depending upon you know what I want. Uh, there's some other things interfering with this and that's probably all these other channels uh, giving me a little bit of extra uh, something. So the fill's got nothing, the gradient is nothing and that's on nothing so that should be okay. Um, I'm not keen on this particular colour. It seems to be picking up some black from somewhere. Uh, I might have to investigate that. Um, let's just line that up a bit. There we go. Just give it something. Maybe take some of the saturation out. There we go. So there we have our little stripey edge and when we come back we'll have a look at the underskirt and give that some uh, some properties and uh, some texture itself. So I shall talk to you in a moment or two. Okay so we're going to work on the underskirt now and I've selected the underskirt layer here on material and in my layers I'm on the skirt layer and we'll add a fill layer to that. Let's close that, make sure it's there. Okay. Uh, so let's turn off a few of these. I don't want emissions, metal, well, um, height. That should do the job. Okay, so I've got a couple of textures that I was going to use for this. So I'm just going to drag and drop these onto my library. Uh, and these are black and white images of a kind of a lace uh, effect. And we'll set those to a texture and I'll just import them into the project. There we go. And now I can drag and drop them in. So I'm on the skirt here, so I'm going to take the big one and pop it in my base color. There we go. And we'll also pop that into opacity. There. Now the opacity is kind of the wrong way around. Uh, it should be a white and black instead of a black and white. Uh, probably doesn't make any sense, but. Uh, let's see if we can invert that. So I'll add a filter. Actually, I won't add a filter. What I'll do is add a levels. Uh, because I can control the levels, I want to change the uh, affected to opacity. And then I'm going to flip these around. There we go. So now my uh, underlying texture is, is coming through. And that's good. Now it's not the best in the world, uh, it could be a better image, but that's not really a problem. Um, I only really want a colour to be on this, so I'm going to pop that to a blackish colour. And then for the roughness we'll increase that so that it's not quite so shiny. There we go. Okay, other than that, uh, I want to change the scale. So let's change it up to somewhere around 
well let's make it a little bit bigger than that there we go and now we have our black underskirt uh, we could also add a little bit of height to this uh, but for that I would need I think to have my image uh, so let's pop that image in there there we go and now we get a little bit of kind of thickness to it which is good it's nice to have that little bit of extra it gives it much more character especially from you know any kind of distance okay so for the trim one we could do a similar job but I've just got this tiling kind of trim piece here and uh, so let's add our fill layer first and in our fill I'm going to pop this into my opacity channel first let's turn everything else off whoops there we go so I'll pop that into the opacity channel and you can see that um, well it's just not working so uh, let's line it up first so first of all I want to go to my 2d view and I can't really see anything which is a little bit annoying so let's go back to 3d uh, la, 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 3d and we'll tile this until we can see something sensible so let's turn it up to say four maybe even more than that I think I want to overblow it just to get yeah there we go so now it's uh, a little more visible I can kind of see where it is and if I go to the 2d room uh, not entirely sure why I'm not seeing anything here. Oh, it's because I'm over here and I should be over somewhere else. Uh, so let's grab this and move it over, see if it will actually show me something. There we go. See, now we can see down here what's going on. And I can far easier, uh, far better control how I arrange that in there. And there we go. I'm probably going to have a little bit of a horrid seam at the back, but yeah, I think I might have to put up with that. Okay, if I bring this down, is that going to help any? Yeah, see, there's a lot more to it <laughs> than I'm actually seeing, so I might even have to go even smaller. Uh, the smaller I go, unfortunately, the smaller, uh, or the more I'm going to lose a bit of detail. But I do want you know to have as much of it as I can in there. I think we're nearly there. Just a teeny bit more. Oops. There we go. Something along those lines. So let's just go and have a look at the 3D view, see what that looks like. That well, looks like that. It's not too bad at all and uh, it's the right way around see this little rim at the bottom uh, I must have something down here which is doing that uh, so I just need to move my whoops not rotate move my tile down until I get rid of that there we go okay so what do we want to do we want some color and I want it to be a blackish color and we also want to have this uh, let's turn that off. Uh, have some roughness. Let's turn up our roughness. Try and match it to the other piece of the underskirt. And I could also do with this being in the uh, base in the height. So let's add it again into the height. There we go. And now I've got a little bit of texture in it. It might be a little too much texture. But hmm, perhaps I can dial that down a bit. Ah, uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, I'm reasonably happy with that. I've got a nice kind of trim, nice lace uh, underskirt, and I think that's doing all right. There we go. Okay, so uh, we've got all the basic bits put in really, apart from the buttons. Uh, let's have a look at the materials. So this is materials. Let's uh, focus it. Yep, yeah, that is the buttons. So the buttons I'm going to go fairly uh, standard. Let's just go to materials and I want kind of a brass uh, button in here. I don't think I, oh no, I do have a brass. 
So let's drag and drop that over here. I'll delete this layer and now we've got a kind of brass colour. I want it to be a bit darker than that. Just going to take it down a little bit. Not too much. Maybe a little more saturation. Yep, there we go. Let's take it out of focus mode and this is what we get. Okay, so this is basically the base stage. You know, from here on we start adding detail to turn it from you know a basic shader mesh because most of this is shaders at the moment um, into something a bit more created and a bit more you know refined uh, so we'll do that in the next section I will start to do it <laughs> so I'll talk to you then okay so let's uh, make a few broad changes uh, first of all let's do the uh, top skirt and I want to change the trim a little bit uh, I want there to be kind of a material difference between those two pieces so I'm going to make this a bit um, more how can I put it um, matte so on our fill layer uh, I could either do it on the fill layer uh, I don't think I will actually I think I'll keep them separate uh, so I can control uh, the stripes uh, so we'll add a new layer there we go Let's just drag it on there, there, and we'll just pop that to roughness. And then in the roughness map, I want, I want, I don't want it to be just matte. I want there to be some noise in it. So we're going to pick out a texture. So we'll go to the textures folder, and in here uh, we'll find something suitable. Let's have a look. This fractal sum looks like it might be quite good. It's uh, quite dense. It's a, a little variation. So if I pop that in the roughness, I can see that there is some roughness now, or some variation. If I go to the roughness channel, we can see it. And uh, what we can do now is adjust to you know make that right. So let's have a look under the noise parameters. Uh, we can increase our roughness a little bit and our opacity. Uh, we want it to be more rough, so I'm going to increase that. Uh, we'll have a min level. Let's make it, oh, it's not very precise, but that will do. And our max level, let's take that up a little. Then I'm going to adjust the contrast to get a bit of difference between them. And the balance just a little bit to blur it. Okay, so uh, it's still way too big so let's go to the UV scale and let's set that somewhere up about uh, actually needs to be more than that let's go 8 and back to our material view and now we've got a little bit of variation there uh, it's much more matte than the, the skirt which is what I want it to be and yeah that's good so uh, let's have a look at the bodice leather so if I go to the bodice and I go to the leather rough, uh, this is too big. It's too, you know, over the over the top. So let's increase that scale somewhere around two. That's fine. We can have a look at the attributes down here. So we can adjust our dots intensity to have them really, you know, popping or a little milder. There's a stain intensity again. You can have it uh, more intense or wide, uh, wide, the milder, and similarly for the small stains. <coughs> and you can adjust your colour and, and do a few things on that. Uh, what I do want to add to this is a, a little bit of kind of edge variation. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this. So let's duplicate that layer. Uh, but I'm going to add a black mask to it, and then we'll add a generator. Now before I turn the generator on, uh, I'm going to really lighten this up. So let's give it a, a distinct difference. And then under the generator, we'll add the UV borders again. And we'll see kind of the effect that makes. And that it's just fading the edges essentially here. And we can adjust this to accommodate for our requirements. 
so I could either adjust the balance to take it up or down the contrast to make it harsher or softer and even the distance to uh, help with that as well there we go now my uh, color adjustment might have been a little bit too far so I can adjust that back again if I want to Let's, I don't want it darker I do definitely want it lighter but I do want it more subtle somewhere around there I think there we go so just to sort of indicate that the edges are you know more worn uh, than the inners there we go we have that all around and that's starting to look nice okay so next we'll come in and we'll have a go at the um, the front panels and the skirt uh, to you yeah, know update that and make that look a little bit more detailed so I will talk to you then okay so for the skirt we essentially want to do uh, more or less the same job as we've done on the uh, trim except uh, I'm going to do it more on color and a little bit on um, roughness so with the skirt selected this will be the skirt front there we go I'm going to duplicate my pure plastic uh, that, that was duplicate gone it's there and now I'm just going to change this a little bit I'm going to make this a little lighter and I'm going to change the uh, color ver or the roughness to give it a little shinier kind of aspect and then we'll add a black mask and add a generator to that and we will use a fill actually we don't need a generator uh, we could just use a fill layer so right click and add fill and we'll use our fractal sum again and you can see now that it, it's kind of gone in uh, a little splotchy but there is variation uh, let's change our scale first uh, I think I took it up somewhere around 8 previously uh, but now I want to adjust my noise parameters so let's uh, go and have a look at our roughness there we go so there's not much really change between them uh, so if I take my min and max level and just move them uh, a little further apart increase my roughness a little bit it's not really helping me um perhaps this isn't the one for me let's try that again yep no i'm not going to use this one so let's switch this out i think i want white noise uh let's have a look for that there we go WHRTE. so white noise there we go so oops i want to drag and drop that into uh, my slot there let's take the scale back a bit that's more like it straight off the bat yep lovely uh, so what can we do we can increase our contrast so there's more of a difference between the two uh, we can change our balance yep and I just want kind of a speckly um, effect which is going to you know just break up that texture so that it's not you know quite so uh, flat essentially so it's a little bit grainy uh, but the further you get away from it and depending upon how close you're going to get to it you know it's going to depend upon what you do here uh, but I might just increase that to two so that it's okay a little bit better close up there we go and I could just adjust this a little bit more perhaps if I turn that really uh, far down you'll get to see the sort of variation we're getting I think that might be a little too close to the original there we go That's, there's a different difference there okay right so what do we want to do next so this 
layer I'm going to copy and I'm going to copy it onto the bodice area so in the bodice above the plastic pure I'll right click and paste that layer in and that will do the same job so now it's not just flat it's got some kind of variation and shine and color to it okay so next one uh, I'm going to do a few more uh, adjustments to those two areas um, along the lines of what we've done previously of lightening the edges and uh, just putting some you know subtle variation in nothing too over the top but something to give it a little bit of something okay so I will talk to you okay so it's essentially the same kind of uh, same kind of process uh, I'm going to duplicate my original plastic there we go and I'll pop that above that variation there and this one I'm going to lighten up a little bit more there we go I may even take some saturation out of it okay so for this one uh, again we need our black mask and we need a generator into it oh, where is it there it is and we use our lovely UV border and you can see now that that's added that in there uh, if you question your eyes just turn it off and turn it back on again and you'll see that it is making a difference and I'm just going to increase my smoothness on this one I want it to be a much broader kind of um, you know overall effect rather than somewhat really tight to the edge okay so that's that one and we can duplicate this layer or copy this layer rather and then onto our underskirt or sorry skirt we'll paste that above the skirt one and that should have done exactly the same so again if I turn it off and on you'll see the exact difference it's making and you can adjust accordingly how subtle you go or how bold you go might depend upon you know your own tastes and you know the effects the kind of effects you like okay so that's uh, largely the broad changes um, the only thing that I'm slightly curious about is the trim uh, whether I can do something with that uh, it all looks a bit kind of nothingy at the moment uh, let's adjust I think the scale perhaps to start with let's make it two that looks a bit better there that's okay so let's try uh, well not try let's do uh, if I right click and paste into that uh, I should get a kind of a pink outline uh, or a pink something uh, so I just need to change my texture out so let's go back to materials where's materials it's here somewhere hidden under my recording thing there there we go and uh, I'll use artificial leather again and then go down I'll lighten up that and maybe adjust the UV border to you know get it to a little bit closer to where I want it to be there we go they're starting to get some uh, a little bit more interest to them there nothing too exaggerated nothing too much just enough so that it's essentially not a shader or doesn't look like or the hole doesn't look completely like a shader uh, just to know I'm going to turn height off here because that's doubling up my height for that shader and I don't want it to there we go let's uh, lighten this up a little bit more there we go lovely right so let's take focus mode off and take a look back see what we've got and it's starting to look a little bit more like I want it to um, so yes I might do that just on the trim down the bottom uh, in between videos I think you've seen me do it enough now to get it and then we're going to come in and add some variation to those layers 
So we've started with kind of a broad variation and then you know we go to a slightly you know, a higher level, a mid-range and then uh, the really fine details at the end. Okay, so I'll talk to you in the next section. Okay, so let me isolate the skirt with the focus mode because uh, I want to work on uh, a little bit more variation. And I'm going to switch, uh, where am I? I'm on the UV of the top layer, which is our faded layer. And let me switch to the mask. There we go. So I can add to this mask with multiple layers and we can use blending and things to, you know, make some differences. So this is all very straight at the moment. So what I want to do is add a fill layer above this for the moment. Oops, not like that. Uh, right click and add fill. And we can pick a texture to project onto this. So let's pick something. I want it somewhat with a bit of direction to it. Let's try this one. And yeah. It's a little bit too, uh, how can I put it, fine. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, la, 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 la. I don't want to be in roughness. Yeah, roughness is fine. Uh, so <coughs> let's try this one, see if that's a little better. <coughs> and this has a, a little bit more kind of direction to it. I might change the projection style to a triplanar projection. <coughs> and that will help me to uh, eliminate any potential seams, not that there will be. Not on this island because it's just one big circle but i want to get the kind of direction right okay so let's go down to our options and i'm going to increase the contrast on that i'll just disable that layer below just for the moment there we go now if i switch this to a different mix type uh, i'm going to go to multiply It's not doing anything, which is not what I want. Am I on the right layer? That's the question. Yeah, I'm on the right layer. Um, let's go. Actually, what I want to look at is the mask, not the <laughs> not the texture. Idiot. Okay, so yeah, that is working. You see that now I've got variation in this. Only where the two textures kind of come together do I get my mix. There we go. So let's try a different one there uh, because I think I was wrong earlier. Let's try this one. And now I get more of a, a variation. Uh, it's a little bit too uh, perfect. Uh, so let's see what we can do. We can adjust our balance. Uh, we can adjust the contrast a little. And yeah, that's looking okay. So let's go and have a look at the material view and see if that's made much of a difference. Doesn't look like it's made much of a difference, uh, but uh, once again, if I turn it off and on again, off and on again, I can see that here, you see, I'm picking up that detail. Uh, we could try different blends. It's easier to see if I go to the mask layer uh, and different textures to try and get, you know, somewhere close to where you want it. Let's try this one. Okay. See if we can take down this blend a little bit. I want a little bit more of the underlying into it as well. There we go. So now, yeah, that's more or less what I wanted. Uh, the scale might be off. Let's see what that does. There we go. That gives us a bit more uh, detail rather than very very broad details uh, and above this one I'm going to add a little bit of a paint layer uh, la, 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 paint where's paint it's here somewhere there it is and on this paint layer I'm going to set my color to black that's not what I wanted foolish man no it is what I want or is it? I don't know anymore. Ah, I want to be on the uh, mask. Then I want to add the paint layer. Now, I got confused last time. 
Uh, I'm still confused because I'm getting this material mode up and I don't want that. Uh, I just want it to be black and white. Oh well. I will work that out between videos and come back again. Something's obviously not quite right. I've done something foolish, I imagine. Okay, so when we come back, we'll add that paint back in and see where we go from there. Okay. So okay, so I'm not sure why it's doing it, but it uh, is doing it. But um, it can be got round. So let's add a paint layer. Oh no, it's not doing it. <laughs> Typical. Um, basically, all that had happened is that my um, material mode was still on, and it just left the material in there. Uh, if you get that, just on the just below here, you'll see a little uh, material. Let's try and fake it. Uh, let's put brass in there. No, it's not going to fake it. Well, how frustrating! <laughs> I couldn't couldn't fix it when I was doing it, uh, and then it decided to fix itself. Never mind. Uh, if you see something there and it's got material on it, and you're on a grayscale channel like the the mask, just uh, just delete the material. There'll be a a little box there that says that shows you the material. Just click on it, and it will go back to. Uh, the mode it should be which is this grayscale okay so i'm going to flip this grayscale over to uh, black and then i'm going to go and find a bit of a random brush uh, perhaps one of the dirt brushes and let's shake dirt one and i'm just gonna just paint in this some little bits of variation so that it's not quite so uniformly deep there we go so just taking that kind of harsh faded edge out so that you know it doesn't look too manufactured if that makes sense it looks a little bit more natural there we go so let's go back to material mode and take focus off there we go okay so I'll do that uh, for this top bit and then we're going to come in for uh, a more overall unifying uh, layer which is going to you know go over seams and um, bring things together so I shall talk to you then Okay, so we're going to add a layer to the skirt here to really add some variation across both the areas. So above both folders, I'm going to add a new fill layer, and to make it really, really obvious, we'll add something bright. So let's go plastic. Okay, so to this, then we'll add a black mask, and to the black mask, we'll add a generator. And for this generator, well, let's try a dirt generator. See what comes through. So the dirt generator down here is using the ambient occlusion and curvature to add things in. Uh, so it's obviously doing a little bit much. And I think the ambient occlusion, especially up here, is going to be a bit crazy. So I'm going to untick it. And it appears to be using most of the ambient occlusion. So let's undo that and just adjust our values to get that going so that's a little bit nicer and uh, we can take our grunge scale and move that down a little and then let's take the edge masking down and what else uh, the contrast so the contrast, if you take that right down, it's going to be a more broader kind of diffuse thing. And if you take it really high, it's going to be you know, very tight indeed. So just find a level you're comfortable with. There we go. And now we can adjust this layer to you know, be a little bit more sensible. So back to the blue plastic mat. Uh, I'm going to take the color and just make it a darker version or a darker uh, grey 
that's just going to add some uh, essential shadow into it. Let's take that up a bit. Uh, I think it's a bit much in here. So I'm going to take down that opacity level till it's less visible. And of course we can adjust all of our other layers along with it. Uh, let's up the roughness a bit, make it a little rougher in those areas. I don't need metallic really. Just something to go across both of our uh, zones. And of course we can also open that up and add a paint layer above and just paint in some, you know, things that bring our zones a little bit further together because this is meant to be a more of a, a dirty layer than anything else and dirt is going to lie across all of the zones it's not picky Let me just increase that brush a bit there we go can make it a little bit more dusty a bit more kind of wild westy I guess add some variation through. Okay so I'm going to use exactly the same layer on the top so I'm going to right click that and copy it and go up to the bodice layer the bodice layers and I'm going to paste that in above my folders and I'm just going to hide everything else just to see what I'm getting and I'm not actually getting an awful lot uh, Oh, I've instanced it. That's why. Let's take that off and copy. Uh, just paste the layer in. There we go. And we might need to adjust these. So I'm going to the mask view. And yeah, I'm getting nothing here because you know the 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 map inputs are different, so it's going to behave differently. Uh, so let's increase our dirt level and now we start to get some variation in. Take the contrast up a bit to get a bit more variation. Perhaps the grunge amount, just a little adjustment there. And there we go, all around. So let's have a look at that in the material view. <coughs> uh, the paint layer. I'm going to delete and re-add because the strokes were in an you know, entirely different place and now I'm just going to paint in some spots. Uh, I'm going to sort of paint around a kind of waste area just to you know, accentuate that a bit and make it look uh, like it's perhaps a bit more under strain than everything else. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so what else do we want to do? Uh, well, I want to do that for the straps as well. Uh, so let's copy this and attempt not to instance it this time. So I'm just going to go into the trim and paste that above my uh, top layer there. Let's go to the mask view and see what we can see. And yeah, that's kind of working off the bat. I'm not doing too bad on that one. I'm going to take this paint layer off and just leave it at that, I think. There we go. Let's have a look at our main material. And it's starting to look like it's coming together. Okay, so we're going to add some uh, much finer details now. I'm going to go in and put some uh, maybe stitching and possibly some rivets in. Um, and then, yep, we'll see where we go from there. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so we're going to use the stitch generator for this and let's start on the uh, skirt. So uh, let's go to uh, not that layer, the skirt layer and I'll open up that folder and I'm going to add a new layer into that, a new fill. 
and in this ah, I don't want to feel foolish man um, <laughs> oh I do want to feel sorry my brain is uh, obviously flip flopping I want to feel not there <laughs> come on I want to feel and I want a black mask as usual I don't know why my brain is flipping out and to that black mask we'll add a generator and the generator we use is auto stitch and that will put a stitch around the edge of our UV and because our UV is a, just one big circle uh, or a donut rather it's got like a, a hole in the middle uh, it's going to put them where we want it and we can adjust this uh, we can change the path position so we can move it closer to the edge if we want uh, we can change our widths and our stitch sizes let's take that down a little bit I think uh, a roundness so we can make them really round or we can make them really square and we can add a certain amount of jitter to them and there we go that's very nice uh, we just need to adjust this material to uh, make them do what we want to uh, which in this case uh, we want some height so let's put a little bit of height on them there we go some nice height and uh, we want them to be a colour uh, I'm going to go for a similar kind of leathery colour I think so let's go up to there or perhaps I want them the same as the skirt well for the skirt I probably want them the same as the skirt don't I uh, I'm going to really decrease the roughness uh, because I want them to be a little shinier than whatever's around it although that I think is might be being masked from above but never mind uh, what else do we want uh, well let's turn the opacity and the emission off uh, the roughness is where it should be yep I think that's as shiny as they're going to get and what else I could even make them metallic if I really wanted to uh, make them really shiny um, not sure I want them that shiny so let's take it down to somewhere about half so there we have stitches around our uh, the edges of our skirt and again I'm going to, just going to go to the auto stitcher properties and just adjust that because I want those ones at the bottom to be much much closer and want them to be thinner as well there we go so just adjust to your requirements and then you know we can use that uh, layer that we just created to you know as a template for the other ones essentially so if I right click on that and copy uh, where's copy gone it's there I can go to the bodice and in my front layer I'll paste that one in there so this one will need a bit of adjusting everything's a bit too close to the edge uh, so I want my position where's my position gone I want that to come in a little bit there we go now that's outside of my front layer so I'm just going to drag it into that folder because for the uh, other or the leather stitches I want a slightly different uh, version so let's open the back and I'll paste that layer in there again it's not gone in the back so I'll drag and drop it onto there and then what we'll do is change the material properties and I can just change this over to one of the le one of the leathers let's try this leather bag that completely disappeared let's go to the fill layer and auto stitch and I think perhaps my positions are out something is changing I can see it changing it's just not changing enough so I've already got height on this, I'm going to have to take that off and I'm just going to have to match it so let's take the height up and the base colour we'll go for a brown darkish 
brown there we go and you could vary the size and yeah anything you wanted there because of course you know the other stitching might be completely different to uh, the other stitching okay so I said I was going to do some uh, rivets on this as well we could put a few in uh, these are purely you know stylish well they're not because I'm not um, but purely for style no other reason uh, no actual function to them you know all the you know stitches is sort of showing that I'm stitching between two pieces of you know fabric whereas these things aren't actually going to staple anything to anything they're just you know a bit over the top uh, so we'll do that in the next step so I'll talk to you then okay so just to break up this leather I'm going to add a few little rivets here and there uh, so where are we uh, I'm on the bodice layer and I'm on the back that's good uh, so we'll add a paint layer and we're going to do all the work on this paint layer with our uh, brush so first of all I want my um, brass material wherever that's gone no that's gold uh, there it is brass and then we can uh, select our brush so I'm going to go for a basic card and then I'm going to look for an alpha uh, there we go now that's filters Where's the alpha's gone there it is and I'm just going to find something that looks a bit kind of rivet like Let's have a look. Uh, I could use like a screw head. We, we could use any of these really. Uh, but I just want something that's not, you know, completely just rounded. Uh, so we could have these flower designs. We could do anything we wanted to. Uh, even bring an alpha in, you know, to work with. Uh, so I'm just scanning down. And I quite like this one so let's zoom in and just size that down a little bit I'm going to rotate the brush uh, where's the brush properties gone uh, here somewhere where is it angle is zero well perhaps I won't rotate it so I'm just going to stamp it down there but before I do that uh, I'm going to go to my channels I'm going to add some height to it and we'll just give that a little bit of height so that it sticks out there we go I'm just going to put one in each corner uh, I'm not going to be too precise about it let it you know let there be some variation and oops let me just isolate this material and then I can pop one there could even pop one on that little patch and then we'll do the same on the other side there we go and then I'm going to go up the top and we'll do the same thing I wonder uh, depending upon how kind of symmetrical this is if turning symmetry on would speed me up a little bit I don't think it's that symmetrical but let's have a look yeah not bad might just have to check a few of them just to make sure see it's really off there uh, so let's undo and turn that symmetry off there we go just have to do it the old-fashioned hard way well the slightly longer way it's just me trying to save myself a little bit of time I guess oh that one's off I'm gonna have to undo yeah see I've tried to save myself time and I've ended up wasting myself time so yeah don't do that nearly there finally whoops it's a little bit too far off just a bit of decoration essentially 
Okay, so let's uh, let's expose that and see where else we could uh, do something like this. <coughs> um, there's one thing: the, the buttons are a little bit plain. So since I've chosen this motif, uh, I think we'll continue it with the buttons. So let's get onto the button layer. Uh, but this time I'm going to turn colour off. Now when I paint on this, it is largely going to be one big round UV. So if I switch over to my 2D view and find the button layer, which is here, these are all stacked on top of each other. So I basically need to, you know, paste it on one and all the rest will follow. So let me go back to the 3D view. I'll add a paint layer. See it's kind of going flat. Um, if I switch this to where is it? Uh, alignment I'll go to UV instead and I should get a flatter projection there we go just doesn't look it did I turn the color off no nope. there we go so I'm just stamping that on there so it's not changing the color it's just actually adding in that uh, little design Let's increase the height on that just to give it a little bit more. And then we've got a little bit of detail on those buttons. <coughs> OK, let's go back to the unfocused view. And that's more or less it, really. I mean, you could spend ages and hours and all sorts of things, you know, going through this and refining it and adding new things and painting on it additional details. Um, but you know, if I do that, this will be an even longer tutorial than it is. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, feel free to take it on and you know do more. You know, um, yeah, get it the way you, you want it looking using you know similar techniques, using different brushes, different materials, different colours, textures, etc., etc. Okay, so I hope you found it useful. Any comments, questions, pop them in the um, in the comments below, and uh, I hopefully talk to you in another set soon. So talk to you then.